Hey, coffee nerds, it's Ru, otherwise known as the Cortado Samurai, and today I wanted to talk about dialing in espresso. This is something that I'm apparently pretty good at, and first and foremost, I don't know if that's a fair statement. <laughs> I just think the average barista really overthinks it and they get in their own head and it's it's really all about just tasting the coffee controlling the variables and knowing what your coffee is going to be used for so i wanted to talk about dialing an espresso and espresso again is all about controlling variables so when you first get into espresso you're going to hear um as a general guide people say you brew at a one to one, one to two, or one to three ratio. Typically, they're gonna say one to two, and they're gonna say 20 to 30 seconds. As we dive into this a little bit, I don't wanna to go too crazy deep, but as we dissect that, you'll see how quickly the normal recommendations kind of fall apart. So, let's talk variables. First and foremost, you need a coffee. Choose a coffee on whatever criteria you want. There's no rules. I'm not there behind you to swat your hand down if you pick up a dark roast. You can drink a dark roast, that's fine. Um, being a mega coffee pretentious barista jerk face, I recommend a specialty coffee from your local roastery, preferably a lighter roast with a single origin. But hey, again, drink whatever you want. <laughs> Keep in mind that if your coffee is super fresh though, it will be extremely gassy, um, which will lead to you having a rough time dialing it in. Back in the day, uh, coffee nerds would say you have to wait at least two weeks before you run a coffee on espresso. That way it's had plenty of time to kind of stabilize and degas. It's not really that specific. Two weeks is just general advice again every single coffee is different every processing method is different every roasting technique is different like there's so many variables that you can't just say two weeks so you got a bag of coffee uh, if it's a little fresh then maybe stick it in your closet like I do uh, make sure it's not open and you just let it age like fine wine. Now don't do what I do where you have like six or eight bags of coffee in your closet like a psycho. Um, <laughs> leave that to the professionals. Um, so, anyways, you have your coffee. It's time to grind it, pull some water through it at nine bars of pressure. Um, kind of, let's not be too hasty. Before you get started, you need to find out roughly how many grams of coffee will fit in your basket in your portafilter. So this is going to be different. It's a pretty wide range, a few grams wide, not a wide range. For example, the portafilter here at work seems to hold up to 19 grams, like comfortably. And that's like a snug fit, too snug, honestly. Um, you don't want coffee getting like crushed into your shower screen. Um, if you crowd your basket way too much, you're not going to have a good time. You need to find a happy medium because if you go, if you underfill your basket, that's going to have a whole different issue and it's just, it's just going to be a bad time. <laughs> you need to find the happy medium. And again, home machines tend to have a smaller basket. So if you're following along at home, I recommend doing a, some research. Uh, it could come in like a manual if you have a machine that you just recently bought. You could scroll Reddit for hours. That's what I typically do. One thing I always tell people struggling to dial an espresso is it's way easier to control 17 sheep than it is to wrangle 22 sheep, which is some weird Texan way of saying smaller doses are easier to handle and manipulate. Given you're not drastically underfilling your basket again. So here on bar at work, I've been running 17, 17 and a half, maybe 18 grams tops. It's a game of give and take. And whether you adjust your dose up or down, you're going to get, that, that's a variable in itself. So it's going to affect your brew. So you've 
picked out a dose. Um, I don't recommend just doing that blindly, but again, you picked out a dose if you made it this far. <laughs> and we can almost get started, but we'll circle back to that later. Let's talk about grind. If you've been online, you've probably heard that a good grinder is better than a great espresso machine. This is true. You'll get far more value, far better results out of investing in a good grinder than you will a great machine. Let me explain. There's two types of grinders, fur grinders and blade grinders. There's honestly there's more types than two types, but for simplicity, there's two types of grinders. Blade grinders is like your grandma's spikes grinder and it's got blades and maybe you twist it or like a blender. A blender would be like a blade grinder and it's wildly inconsistent. So if you have one of those, I don't know if this video is going to be for you. <laughs> Burr grinders, however, you're in business. A burr grinder relies on two burrs spinning in opposite directions to direct the beans down a funnel where they're ground into a uniform size and they're not violently chopped in half by blades. Since the burrs are made out of like ceramic or stainless steel, little heat is generated during the grinding process, keeping the flavors intact as the beans are ground. This process makes it easier to grind coffee consistently for any type of brewer, um, they come in varying sizes. So the closer the burrs are together, the finer the grind, and obviously the wider, the coarser, if that makes sense. So when you're grinding for espresso, you have to grind fine, and I mean like fine vine. Think the consistency of powder, give or take. You can, a little bit of wiggle room, but not much, kind of powdery. If that blade grinder in your hand only gets to sea salt level, I'm going to need you to forget about espresso, pick up a Chemex or like an AeroPress, because grind means everything when it comes to coffee. A slight tweak of the grinder is the difference between tasting cigarette ash or strawberry Pop-Tarts. You've got a powdery grind and a portafilter measured out to a perfect dose that feels right. It's not going to be right the first time, but anyways, well, it's time to brew if you made it this far. But remember, espresso is all about controlling variables. So this next part I think is really important, but you know, it's not necessary. I like to keep a notepad to document any and everything you do. Every second counts, every adjustment just as important as the last. I can tell, I can't tell you how many times a day a coworker tries to tell me Something is off about how the espresso is pulling or tasting, but whenever I ask them like, oh, you know, how long did it pull? How many grams did you do? You know, did you flush the, flush the, fuck, I can't, <laughs> flush the group head. They don't have the answers. They're not consistent. You can't expect your espresso to be consistent if you can't be consistent. As a human, you're just another variable to be controlled. And that sounds kind of serial killer whenever I say it. <laughs> I swear I'm not a villain. <laughs> but keep notes. Keeping notes is so, so, so important. You have to know. Like if something works beautifully and you don't remember what you did, that's not really helpful. So you're taking notes. Write down your grind. Write down your dose. Um, if you know the temperature, write down your temperature that you're brewing at. Next on, we're going to move on to puck prep. I want to talk about puck prep. I feel like puck prep always gets swept under the mat, but expert home espresso enthusiasts on Reddit will tell you it's damn important. Puck prep refers to getting your coffee grounds evenly distributed and of course tamped with give or take 30 pounds of pressure and what we baristas call pucks. Don't call them cakes. That's weird. Don't do that. There are many different tools for puck prep that exist in the world, ranging in prices of like five bucks to hundreds of dollars for like that Moonraker by Weber. Let me tell you, you don't need all that. Puck prep is one of those things where even just doing a little changes a lot. It matters a lot. So like changing your car's oil every so many miles, maybe like once a year, that does a lot if you compare it to just not doing it at all. <laughs> um, Better late than never, basically. Buy yourself a little uh, fitting wedge tool that's matching size to your portafilter and call it a day. 
Uh, you could get needles too, those are really fun, but they're kind of goofy and modern grinders don't tend to clump up all that much, unless of course you're again using like a blade grinder or something, which you shouldn't be doing. So, um, you've prepped your puck, let's move on to tamping your coffee. Do this evenly and with some weight behind it. Um, baristas notoriously end up getting wrist issues or carpal tunnel or something if they're not tamping well. You need to be consistent, even pressure. Um, get a tamper that fits your portafilter size or you could get a automatic puck press. Those are getting more and more common like every coffee, every cafe I see nowadays. You really can't skip this step. I'm sorry, you need a tamper. You could probably find them for 20 to $100 maybe. There's some wedges that are also a tamper on the other side. I recommend one of those. Okay, so your puck, your coffee is ready to go. You're locked and loaded. Remember, you're writing this stuff down. Moving on to the espresso machine. Typically, there are two types of machines. That's just a genera generalization, but volumetric machines will let you set how much volume the shot is going to be made with. And timed machines, not to be confused with time machines, are the standard out in the wild. Uh, this just means that they're going to run water through your beautiful puck indefinitely or until you stop the shot. You know, so they run based on time. Volumetric machines will only ever use as much water as you program it to use. This can be a pro or a con depending on your barista style. Personally, I feel as if time machines allow baristas to have a little bit more control over a shot in the moment. Volumetric machines allow for more consistency throughout the day. Now you've prepped your shot and all that's left to do is pull it. Don't be scared, I promise it's not gonna explode. First, run water through your group head, just a little bit. If you're on a home machine, this could be not practical, but it is important. After water has stopped uh, dripping and water has ceased and everything's nice, everything's ready, insert your portafilter by matching the ears to the slots in the group bed and twist it to lock it in place. It's important that you have a, that it's firmly locked in position, but don't overdo it. Um, for example, some low Marzocco's machines, 90 degree angle is all you need. Anymore, you're just kind of like really jamming your puck up into the shower shower head so anyways so as soon as your portafilter is in place and you've weighed out a shot glass by the way you should be weighing out shot glasses on a scale um that's pretty accurate they can have timers on them too that's nice weigh out a shot glass tear it and run your shot um if the shot's pulling way too fast you need to grind finer shot pulling way too slow that's that it's like tree slap slowly tree sap slowly dripping one job at a time you need to grind coarser remember when you're first getting started with espresso it's okay to shoot for certain parameters 20 to 30 seconds is a good starting point um but it's not it's not a law all right how did it go every machine is different and every coffee is different so results are going to vary I want to take a moment to point out that if a shot tastes good to you, that's all that matters. I encourage you to taste nearly every shot you pull and taste what each variable changes about a coffee. So whenever you're changing variables, variables, make sure you're changing one at a time or maybe two if you're bold. So your shot pulled, um, make sure you weigh out your yield like the total coffee you got out of that shot make sure you weigh that out write it down make sure you write down the time and if you want to do a quick calculation about ratio take the volume out and divide it by the volume in of coffee so i'm going to take a moment to talk about some dialing in tasting basics for espresso these are more so general concepts so don't follow them religiously i'm sick and tired of hearing people recite these textbook things to me but they can definitely help you learn to dial in better and uh you know we, you can build off of these moving forward so an ideal shot of espresso 
is complex, sweet, ripe. It has a nice finish. Uh, bonus points if it brings back repressed memories of your childhood. A shot is typically deemed under-extracted, however, if it's sour, salty, or really quick finish. Keep in mind, a novice to the world of tasting espresso easily confuses acid to sour. I think this is specifically difficult with espresso, just the brewing method in general. Every brewing method has a, a taste to it almost. Um, so train your palates, you know, make sure you're drinking a lot of coffee, make sure you're eating a lot of citrusy stuff. Um, training your palate, super important. Finally, over extracted coffee is probably what you're going to see most of in the wild. It's typically accompanied by bitter, dry, hollow, empty, burnt tasting notes. You can actually use some of this knowledge in other brewing techniques as tasting all types of brew methods will increase your overall ability to taste and experience, I think. So for example, if you are making a pour over at your house and you brew a seven minute brew pour over, that's gonna be over extracted. We're talking about a lot of time for that water to be in contact with your coffee. It's gonna be over extracted. Um, moving on, either your first shot was beautiful and complex and now you're a Reddit community member of the Espresso subreddit. Uh, or your shot didn't go quite according to the game plan, that's okay. Write down any and all thoughts you had about each and every shot you pull. Time ties everything together. Manipulate your grind size to change how long the water flows through the coffee bed. Think of coarse coffee as stones and fine coffee like sand. The water will easily push through the gaps in the rocks, but will take much longer to force its way through the tiny gaps in the sand. Let's talk about ratio. After your shot pulled, finish your homework. Fill in how much the shot weighed, how long the shot took. Now you should have a handful of variables documented for your reference moving forward and find, you know, whenever you're dialing espresso. Grind setting, grams in, grams out, time for your shot. And of course the ratio, divide the grams out by grams in, you'll have the ratio that you brewed this coffee at. Um, super nerds will tell you how much coffee was actually extracted. It's a whole thing, but the more access to information you have, like more information is never a bad thing whenever it comes to espresso. Brew temp is also a great variable to be able to control, um, although most home machines won't give you access to that variable. Another note, uh, different roast levels of coffee tend to be desirable at different brew ratios. Let me explain. So dark roasts are rough. Typically dark roasts are brewed around 20, 25 seconds because honestly, baristas, coffee people, we're not all that interested in extracting every nook and cranny of a dark roast. Um, that would be gross. This could look like a one to 1.5 ratio, for example, since we stopped the shot shorter than usual. A medium roasted coffee might do a little bit better with some extra extraction, 23 to maybe 28 seconds could be right up its alley. And a ratio reflecting that might be more in line with a typical safe one to two ratio. Finally, a really light roasted coffee could require some serious extraction to get just right, to get it decently balanced. Take this Guji Ethiopia that we're using here on bar, for example. It's not uncommon for me to run a 28 to 36 second shot. I find that around 34 seconds, this coffee hits its stride and really reaches a more balanced cup. Moving away from the insanely bright mixed berries into more of a raspberry glaze, you know, fig Newton fun kind of thing. It's nice, it's really nice. Um, all variables will affect your shots. All of them. Now, not to scare you, but let's talk about a few of these common variables because I feel like maybe that could help if you are having issues. Uh, increase in dose increases extraction. More coffee obviously equals more coffee out. Uh, grind finer, more surface area equals more extraction. Think about it like that. Uh, if you raise the heat, 
Raising your brewing temperature increases extraction. Uh, hot water is just good at extracting. Why do you think cold brew takes hours or days to extract anything? Um, increased brew time. Longer contact time will absolutely equal more extraction. Um, the longer I stay in the pool, think about it, the more I shrivel up like a raisin. That's just how it works. If you didn't distribute your coffee well enough during puck prep, uh, this could lead to like uneven extraction, channeling in your puck. Um, pucks will absolutely break down under nine bars of pressure if your uh, puck prep isn't consistent. This could lead uh, into an inconsistent shot or just extreme channeling or like spurting out the side or something. You'll, you'll know when you see it. Um, if you leave your portafilter in a minute like in the group head before you pull the shot, this could affect like water dripping. Could be, it could be dripping on your uh, on your coffee prematurely and lead to a uneven extraction. These are just like a few examples of variables and their effects on your perfect shot of espresso. There's a lot more, but just for example. So finally, I want to leave some closing comments about what makes the perfect shot of espresso. And this is something I touched briefly on a long time ago. The perfect shot of espresso is whatever you want it to be. There is no right and wrong. We exist in a weird gray area where I can absolutely hate what you love and vice versa. Personally, I love floral, sweet, acidic coffees. But I know if I served that espresso in the shop's espresso drinks, I'd have old people with pitchforks and torches trying to burn down the building. I'd get canned in a heartbeat, right? I'd lose my job. So you have to know who is your target audience? Who is it for? Are you drinking the espresso straight? Are you going to be adding milk and syrups to it more often than not? Espresso is an art and it is based on barista to barista, morning to morning. Um, it'll even change as the coffee ages day to day. It'll take a ton of practice to get really good at espresso, just as any other skill might take a lot of practice. So have fun. Don't play by the rules too much. Once you get a decent understanding of general guidelines and you can consistently consistently manipulate and dance around in these guidelines then you know just branch out a little bit there's no rules here <laughs> uh, we've only been being scientific and pretentious about coffee for a handful of years you know before this it was just crush it with a big rock and dump some hot water through a sock you know um anyways <laughs> i've been your host Thanks for stopping by and listening to my rant about espresso. See you next time.